Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me and in front of me today. So today I'm going to continue on with the plant review series for the glorious plant that you can see in front of me and this was a popular poll on my Instagram. I asked people what they wanted to see me review next and this definitely got the most amount of votes. So this is the Anthurium regal or regale. I'm not entirely sure how it's proposed to be pronounced, but I will call it a regal throughout the video. If you're one of the diehards of the series and you're back again for another review, welcome back. As always, you know that you can find the chapters down below. And if you are new, some ground rules with all of these reviews, they will be biased to my experiences with my specific plant in my specific conditions. In this case, it is in a conservatory in the UK and whatever that might mean. I do always encourage a lot of people, if you've got this plant yourself and you've grown it successfully or even unsuccessfully, please do share your experiences down below. I'm hoping eventually what these videos will become is a repository of information so people before they go and splurge a lot of money, because I'm pretty sure still at the moment the Regal isn't one of the cheapest Anthuriums you can buy, so they can know what they're getting into essentially, maybe what they can find in terms of care. But yeah, without further ado, let's move into the first topic. So first topic as always is going to be background on this plant and there's a bit of an interesting story as to how this plant came into my care. Now, I was looking for this specific plant, kind of, but the reality was, and I got this by the way on eBay, and I'll touch a bit more on that and availability in a bit, but I was actually looking for one of my wish list plants, and I have done a wish list recently, and I will put it at the top there, but I was looking for the Philodendron Dean McDowell. I couldn't find it back then. And if I'm not mistaken, and I w it will be on the title of this video, I think this plant has been with me for about a year now. It's not been two or three years like I had with some of my other plants, but I know this is one that a lot of people are coveting at the moment. And I know there's a bit of a reputation on this, and I will touch on that in just a bit. But So I thought I'd do a video talking a bit more about what my experience has been with this plant over the last year. So yes, I was looking for a Philodendron Dean McDowell, I couldn't find one online. I did, interestingly enough, I found the Philodendron Parsisanum, and that will be a review that's gonna be coming soon. Do let me know if you want. I know there's a couple of people that want to see the Parsisanum. A bit of a spoiler alert. It's probably gonna be one of my more scathing reviews. But again, no hate on the specific plant. My experiences with this plant have been questionable, to say the least. But I did find this one specific plant, and then as you can do sometimes on eBay, I went to see what else that seller was selling, because I'm just like, well, maybe I can do a bundle and get it sent at the same time. Turns out that the seller was a local collector to my area of the UK, which is around Norfolk. And I kind of reached out to the seller after I'd purchased the Pastazanum and the Regal, and just went, is there any chance that maybe I can come pick it up so we can avoid the stress that the plants might have going through any form of kind of delivery system? I'm quite happy to just jump in my car. It was maybe a 10, 15 minute drive from my house. So it's not too, too far away. Uh, she was really open to it as well. It was around kind of the ends of lockdowns and stuff like that. So everybody was very keen to see other human beings at that point. Um, met this amazing person. Unfortunately, I didn't get any of their socials, so I can kind of give them credit. And I was hoping to go back and kind of reach out via eBay, but I don't know if they're still a seller. I couldn't find them. Um, but they had a spectacular collection. Ironically enough, when I was there, because we, uh, the, this individual, she showed me some of her collection, and she did have possibly one of the largest Dean McDowell's that I've ever seen. She wasn't selling it, but the leaves were two or three times as large as my biggest Gloriosum leaves. And if I was kind of, mm, do I want the Dean McDowell at that point after seeing it in person, I'm just like, yes, I definitely want this plot. I will make space for what potentially could be a beast of a plot. But yeah, and that's where I picked these 
plants up from. That's how they came into my care. It's interesting, I'm not going to touch on the Passazanum, I'll leave that story for the Passazanum review. But for this one, she did kind of mention, she just said, oh, I've struggled a bit with this, and I've got other ones that have grown a bit better for me, so give it a try and see what you think. And I did. I took it home, I was very, very happy with it. Um, and there was a lot of babying that happened with this plant when I first got it home because the very small amount of videos that I could find about the regals back then, specifically on YouTube, did all more or less mention that this wasn't a beginner anthurium and it can be a bit tricky and a bit huffy and almost to the same level as throwing a bit of a hissy fit as the queen anthurium or the anthurium or aquarium. So I was very, very tentative with its care, but I'll talk a bit more on that on the accessories section, which ironically enough these days has become a bit more of accessories and my experiences growing it specifically, basically. So yeah, let's move on to the next topic. So speed of growth for this one, and this is an interesting one, and I did know some of this going into owning this plant, even before I purchased it. I'd seen a couple of videos that have been mentioning it. I did some research myself, and I did know that it's not one of the fastest growing anthuriums. So as always with this plant, I will try to add a picture here for my plant care app so you can see what it looked like when I first got it. I think the oldest leaf might have been the first leaf that grew in my care. So I think I've, I think, if I remember correctly from the picture, there probably would have been two leaves. I've lost both of those leaves and these are new leaves since then, basically. And in my experience, that's that's been true, basically. This is definitely one of my slowest growing anthuriums. Granted, the thing I will say, and I will bring it up, and I will hopefully be interspersing other little close-up videos throughout the video, but if I bring this up, and you might be able to see, I'm trying not to knock everything down. So you can see the most recent leaf that's the previous leaf. So, I mean, it was sizable even then, but I mean, the new leaf is absolutely ginormous. There is also, and I will get some close-ups of this as well, there is also a new growth coming in and I could not be happier. But yes, definitely a slow growing anthurium. I don't know, I probably would go as far as saying possibly my slowest growing anthurium, and it might just be because I don't think it was that juvenile of a plant when I first got it. I have not had an inflorescence from this yet, I don't think. Um, and the thing that I've noticed with mine, and I think I've seen this from a lot of other people, and I'm seeing this when I'm seeing this plant come up to the market more recently, you only really ever get one or two leaves on this plant. From what I'm seeing from people's collections, I might be wrong, correct me if you've had different experiences on yours. But I've never been able to keep more than two leaves at any one time on this plant. Pretty much by the time that third potential leaf, like what I've got now, the, the new growth coming in, starts hardening off is the time that the oldest leaf declines and drops off. I also have seen this plant with only ever one leaf on, on some people's Instagrams and things like that. So the fact that I was able to keep at least two leaves going at one time, I will take that as a win. But if I look at something like my Anthurium Metallicum, which I think might actually be a Magnificum now that it has grown a bit more, and that's a plant that has been on debate for a long time on my YouTube channel. I think I have got a video about it and I'll put it up the top there, and you can see even in the comments there were people still debating it back then. Um, but this is a plant that unlike that one, because that one I can kind of look at it now, and it's got one, two, three, four, five leaves, and they're all sizable leaves as well. This one's not quite the same. So I will say if you're going into this, at least in my experience, this is a slow growing anthurium. And yes, you will get, I mean, I mean, look at the size of these leaves, basically, and the venation and how pretty they are. I am not taking away from that, but you might be part of that one leaf club, basically, at that point. And as long as you're comfortable with that, that's fine. I mean, these leaves are spectacular enough in themselves, but just something to bear in mind there, especially if you're going to be throwing a lot of money towards this plant. Mm -hmm. 
Now, ease of propagation with this plant, as I've mentioned previously, barring pollinating inflorescences and getting seedlings that way from anthuriums, I have still not attempted to cut up a chunk and try to root it out that way, mainly because I have purchased chunks from other people twice now, and I have wasted my money twice. It might just be because I don't know how to root out a chunk. I have done a lot of wet sticks from monsteras, philodendrons, and things like that, and theoriums seem to be a challenge for me to try and grow from like a stem cutting, essentially. However, what I will say about this specific plant, I'll see if I can put a close up so you can actually see what I'm talking about. In relation to some of my other anthuriums, and granted it might be a situational thing, essentially, from where I've got it, and the, maybe the fact that it's leaning a bit more, because if you look at some of these um, petioles, and I'll bring it up so you can see quite how long that petiole is, I think this plant is etiolating, so it might be because of that as well. But essentially what I am seeing with this plant is that the stem itself is a bit more elongated and there's very clear chunky aerial roots that I can see. So if I was ever to chop up a plant, ironically enough, this probably wouldn't be the one that I would do it with, purely because it is so slow. But in terms of morphology, this would probably be the one that I would feel most comfortable to chop up because that space between the nodes isn't as tight as some of my other anthuriums. So yes, in that respect, that is a good thing about this plant. As I've mentioned, I haven't done a cutting to take a chunk to propagate it, so I can't really talk too much on this plant's propagation. I do encourage you, however, if you have done that and you want to share your experiences, I would be very keen to find out the successes or any struggles that you might have had, as I am sure other people watching this video might be as well. Moving on to availability for this plant, and I did touch on this just previously, where I found this on eBay. It wasn't particularly challenging to find in the UK even back then. I know there was a few people that were selling regals, the price was something that put me off because it was low to mid treple digits. And I'm just like, I know that this is a difficult anthurium. I don't know if I want to spend quite so much money on it. I was exceptionally fortunate back then to find this for mid towards high double digits. And I was over the moon. Interestingly enough, the seller from eBay, when I went to see her, she just thought, oh, I think I might have underpriced that. And under that, maybe, but I'm not going to argue. This was a great price. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of these plants that I don't think has dropped too much in price. It is still a relatively pricey anthurium based on what, mm, I think maybe seedlings or kind of much more juvenile versions of this plant might be a bit cheaper at the moment, at least from what I'm seeing. I still know that this is a relatively coveted plant. I went recently to a plant festival in Leeds, which was an absolute blast, um, with a whole bunch of people there. I'm not going to bore you too much about that on this video. However, there will be another video coming this week where I will be showing some clips from the plant festival. I'll be talking through it. I'm going to attempt my first YouTube premiere video, so I will be there when it launches so we can all have chats. And I think I'm going to structure it because I was part of a discussion panel during that event. I have got all the questions and that video might be something interesting to try because I would invite all of you to be part of the same panel so we can all discuss the questions in the comments for those videos. But yeah, that's if I can figure out how to do that, that will be the second video this week. So back to this, sorry, way bit of a tangent there. But in terms of the availability at this point with this one, I still saw a lot of people at that festival that were getting really excited to get this plant from places like Grow Tropicals, it's based in Leeds and Equigenera as well. This is a plant that people were still looking for, even knowing what they know, because I think that narrative is still maintained on that it might be a bit of a slow grower, that it can be a bit tricky to keep happy. So yeah, that tells you something as well there in terms of 
the price probably won't drop as much. I also don't think the price is going to drop too, too much because of that speed and because of that fussiness. Because this isn't necessarily an easy plant to get it to a stage, at least in my experience, where it would propagate easily or possibly even grow easily. That is my two cents on the subject. But I think this is still a plant that will remain a bit more on the pricey side for a while. I will say, however, that if you're looking for a plant that's very similar in look, and I'm looking at it because it's further down on a the shelf there, very similar in look to this plant and is a lot faster and a lot less fussy, believe it or not, an Anthurium crystallinum, and granted, you'll see the difference in the very, very mature leaves, but the reality is for a lot of people, unless you're getting a ridiculously mature leaf directly from the cellar and you're gonna grow it on, it's gonna be a few years probably before you're gonna to get to that stage. At this stage, at this leaf size, I'm looking at the Regal and I'm looking at the Crystallinum. They are very similar looking. And the Crystallinum is a lot faster and it is a lot more stable and less fussy. So something to consider there. At least that's how I'm visually seeing these plants. So moving on to pests for this one. And again, it won't come as a surprise to anybody, but this is a plant that has got, I think most of my anthuriums generally, touch wood, relatively pest resistant. I don't tend to get a lot of issues on it. You might see some issues on the leaves there. That was not pests, that was cosmetic damage when the leaf was kind of emerging and hardening off. I will also add at this stage that out of all of my anthuriums, this is the one of the anthuriums that I have that takes for, at least it has been in my experience, forever for the leaf to fully harden off, which means there's a very long period of time that the smallest and more so than any of my other anthuriums, the smallest knock or kind of jab or any kind of damage to that maturing leaf will create some significant damage. I babied these, that specific leaf like you would not believe until it fully hardened off and I still got some cosmetic damage. It might just be my experience with this and if yours does differ do let me know down below. But yeah, in terms of pests with this one, one or two mealybugs in its entire lifetime. And here as I said I am struggling generally with mealybugs. I do have some white fly on occasion. The white fly does tend to be attracted to this as well. But no spider mites, thank touch wood, no um, thrips, nothing, and even the ones that I've mentioned, no real heavy, heavy pest pressures. And I think that it would be true for most of my anthuriums. I don't know, I will, maybe I'll do some research on this as well. I am wondering if there's anything within the sap of the plants themselves, the anthurium specifically, that might be unpalatable for, or less palatable for some pests, and maybe that's why I've not had some of those pests on these plants. But yeah, I think that's that's that is really it with pests. So looking at accessories and generally how I have found growing this plant, and I will kind of give you the full kind of background now. So when I got it from the cellar, it was in damp sphagnum moss and perlite. I let it settle for a couple of weeks and then I moved it, I think, into my Aroid soil mix. And I was doing this because I kind of wanted, and I've had some good success with my Aroid soil mix. I hadn't moved many anthuriums at that point to pond. I was trying to find some information online about how anthuriums take to Pon, um, I think the one channel that's always been very, very amazing with Anthuriums, and I'm so glad that she's back, is I think the Plants Meow. Uh, I think I might be wrong if I'm not, I'm gonna correct myself at the top there. But she was mentioning she had good success with most of her Anthuriums, so I did eventually take the plunge and move some of my Anthuriums over to Pon, and eventually I did do that as well. It is currently in Pon, 
and I will try to show you without dropping absolutely everything. It is currently in pond. It's also in self-watering, and I do probably need to do a bit of a flush and a bit of a clean of the pot. And I still have a damp sphagnum moss collar at the top, and it seems to be loving life. It did take a while to kind of settle in, so it did take a beat to settle in, but when it did, and I was able to kind of get it happy, it did exceptionally well, basically. So you can see that big leaf has happened since I've moved it into pond with the water reservoir. This was an anthurium that I found exceptionally thirsty, and I think that might be the reason why this might be a bit of a struggle for some people, because it is one that... There's other anthuriums that I've got, so... I've got my Otarifolium on the side there, I've got my Crystallinum down below. They are very similar to the Clarinervium, where they do actually... They don't mind as much if it goes towards dry and then you water it out. So they can do that, but you know the comment that a lot of people make with Anthuriums is they need to have airy and evenly moist media as much as possible, and that's when they're going to be their happiest. This is definitely one that I would agree 100% with that statement. So it was a very, very thirsty plant, which is why I wanted to move it into pond. I did move it into pond. I transitioned it properly, like I have mentioned on my pond transition video, and I'll link that at the top there as well. And I did leave it without a water reservoir for a good few months, and it was great because I did this on the winter time, so I didn't want to risk it getting any form of rot, basically. So eventually just before the summer came in, and I cannot tell you how happy I am that I did this just before the summer and all the heat waves that we've had in the UK, I moved this into a reservoir. It was exceptionally happy, um, and I am so glad that I did because I was refilling the water reservoir with this plant in the middle of a heat wave once, possibly twice a day. That's how thirsty of a plant it was, for me, in my experience. And I will also state that the heat waves on some of the warmest days here in the UK, you were still looking at almost 40 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Ridiculous weather. But I will say that this is definitely a slightly thirstier anthurium. So would I suggest pond with this? Yes, but do it very gradually because it can be a bit more of a sensitive plant. I would agree with what other people's experiences has been with this, but it did appreciate being moved into that media, basically. So that is something to remember. I did have some good root structures. I did have a relatively mature-ish plant when I did that. So I don't know whether or not that would necessarily work for much, much younger plants when their roots aren't quite as established yet, because the pond can be quite heavy on some of the anthurium roots. And I am trying to further grow out some of the seedlings that I that I kind of created last year into pond at the moment. And they are struggling, but I think it might just be because the pond is a bit too heavy for them still. So we'll see. I'm, I am just guesstimating at that point. But um, fertilizing with this one, as with everything that I've got in pond, in the water reservoir, I do a very weak sol solution of liquid gold leaf. Swear by that. Still do years later. Why change something that's been working beautifully for everything? And yeah, I mean, I, would I suggest pond for this? Yes. Would it grow happily in a chunky arrowed soil mix? And I had that in a net pot at that point as well. Yes, it did. It's still got a leaf in that condition as well. But I will say you need to just be very aware of your watering of this plant. The other thing that goes without saying for the people that have been here for a while, this is in my conservatory. So it is getting very, very decent humidity. I don't know and I don't think it would do that great in regular household humidity. And the fact that it drinks up water as much as it does, to me, would imply that it kind of, I mean, it, it's really super thirsty in a high humidity environment. I dread to think what it would be like in a drier environment. So do with that as you will. Obviously, a support stick isn't needed for this. At this stage, it might do at some point when it gets a bit bigger. <laughs> I will see if I can add a clip. I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to kind of capture it properly, but because it's so forward leaning, even though it's got a heavy pond pot and it's at the very edge of one of my shelves, I have got the petioles 
kind of slightly attached to my plant shelf because I've got fans going in and these leaves are moving a lot. So I was worried it was going to damage the petiole. It didn't. But yeah, there is a very high risk that if this chance, if this plant gets a lot larger, it might topple forward. Forward, And I don't know with a new leaf that's coming in at the moment. It presents a unique scenario where it's growing under the plant shelf at the moment and I'm going to have to move that leaf without snapping it so it grows away from under the plant shelf so it doesn't get stifled by the plant shelf, basically. Hopefully that makes sense and I'm not just rambling. But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about accessories. If you do have any questions, do drop them down below. As I've said on some of my other videos, I'm only around for a couple of days after I've posted to come back on comments on this specific video that I've just posted. If you want to have some more pressing questions answered, probably the easiest way is to find me on my Instagram. It's linked down below. And just ask your questions there, basically, because I know some people might have some questions on this. I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. As I've said, I've only had this for about a year. But I can at least give you some of the knowledge that I've gained within the year of owning this. But yeah. So coming into final thoughts for this plant. Now, you can see me hesitate there slightly. So I'll go with the first question that I usually do is knowing what I know now, and if I didn't have this plant, would I be purchasing this plant again? Yes, I would. I would, I would, I would. I still like this plant. I do want to see when it gets much more mature leaves and when it really starts looking different, at least in my opinion, to the crystallinum. And then it would probably be a bit more of an unequivocal one. But if it doesn't have too much of a big difference, I might then change my answer to say probably not and I would just get a crystallinum. But for now, yes, I would repurchase this plant, even knowing that it can be a bit difficult at times. And then the other question that I usually do is that score of between 0 and 1 being the worst and 10 being the best. Where would I rank this? As an anthurium, I would probably give this a 6 or a 7, just because it's a bit more challenging of an anthurium. As a house plant, a 5 or a 6, because it's a bit more challenging. If I was to give it a score for looks, and kind of real impressiveness, this would probably be closer to an 8 and a 9. It is very much a, even people that are not into plants and they come in here and they just, they will, this is one that they will look at and just go, what is that? That is kind of cool. It might be because of the venation of this plant, it might be because of the size of these leaves and they do look like really robust leaves. But yeah, I think that's kind of how I would score the Anthurium regal. But as always, if you've got your own experiences I've mentioned throughout this video, please, please, please do throw them down below. I think there's a few more videos now that exist on the Regal, but I know that there isn't as many as there could be. So let's use this as a bit of an information hub. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is because there wasn't any of this information when I was kind of looking into doing this plant, or there wasn't that much information specifically about this specific plant. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon, and I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.